Hey, welcome back to Ontario Lakeside. This is a little project I'm working on. I want to make a solar boat. An infinite powered, travel as long as you have sunlight boat. No batteries, just solar panels and this beat up old boat. I swear I'm not a hoarder, but I do tend to hang on to things I think might have use later on. This is our old boat. We stored it on the shoreline in the winter and uh, the ice gave a little dent over there. And this old motor is not very reliable. So what I'm going to do is take this motor, pull the gas engine off, and put this treadmill motor that I salvaged on top to drive the propeller. And I'm going to power it all with four solar, pa solar panels from our original solar setup that we don't use anymore. I'm going to build these into a little canopy and we'll see what we get. I mean, I don't know how much power we're going to get and how much speed, but go anywhere you want as long as there's sunshine. DC motors are great because they will run directly off a solar panel. Although this one is 135 volts DC, we're only going to be sending about 48 volts to it, so obviously we're not getting the full horsepower. But I think it'll be enough to cruise around the lake. This is old 5.5 power, 5.5 horsepower Johnson from the 60s, 70s maybe. And uh, although it will run, it's really not very reliable. And uh, I'm going to see if I can pull this gas motor off and then figure out a way to connect the DC treadmill motor directly to the sh shaft down to the propeller. Taking the motor off was uh, just a matter of four bolts and then I was able to slide the power head off of the transmission that goes down to the propeller. The top of the transmission has a spline that lines up with the uh, gas engine so I got to find a way to interface the new electric motor with that spline. I started by pulling the pulley attachment off of the electric motor. Then you can see here's the uh, drive shaft from the engine and I'm, what I'm going to do is cut off the bottom section of this and weld it onto the pulley and then that'll go back onto the electric motor with the keyway. I wanted to make sure I had a nice flush fit so that there wouldn't be a lot of uh, wobble once I welded this on and put it back on the motor. I put the two things in a clamp, lined them up as close as I could and then proceeded to weld them together. It's not super pretty, but uh, it works well. It's a good solid connection. Then I can use the Allen keys to tighten it back down to the shaft of the electric motor. I hooked it up to a little power supply I had that was only a few volts, just to give it a try. And you can see there's a tiny bit of wobble, but I think that'll be acceptable. Now here I'm just fitting it onto the uh, shaft that goes down into the transmission. Luckily I'll be able to use the forward and reverse lever. It works. Now I just got to find a way to mount the electric motor to the transmission. I just made some simple brackets out of uh, steel bar stock.
I'm doing a test fit to figure out where to drill the holes for the uh, hardware that's going to mount the electric motor. Turns out alignment of the uh, motor with the transmission was pretty important and I had to fiddle around quite a bit to get it lined up to work properly. The old uh, spot where the choke was is now the on-off switch. I thought it'd be fun to keep the existing cover as best I could, so I modified it a bit to fit over the electric motor. Eventually I want to make a decal that uh, indicates that it's full electric. I figured I might as well try to repair some of the ice damage. I tried a couple different methods, some more successful than others, but in the end I was able to straighten it out Pretty, good, pretty well. Here you can see I'm uh, kind of riding the high seas. Quick power wash to get rid of some of this blue paint that was just coming off onto everything. I guess uh, whatever kind of paint it was wasn't. Uh, stable anymore and it was just getting onto everything. Well, if there ever was a day to test a solar boat, this is it. It turns out when we first started, I thought I had three panels connected, but I only had two. So it was a little lackluster. Eventually we got three panels hooked up and uh, moved along pretty well. It's definitely not speedy, but it is running directly off the sun. And I think I could get some better performance once I get these panels mounted up in a better way. I was casting a shadow onto one of them. It's pretty quiet and perfect for our lake because it's not a big lake. And really, this is just a backup for our gas-powered boat. Something that you can take out, like a pedal boat, to do some fishing or just to hang out with some friends. Go, go. I hope to get some lithium batteries, and then uh, we could probably get a lot more power out of this if we were able to store the energy of the sun all day and then come down and use it whenever we wanted. That'd be pretty cool. So I'm looking into that, and that'll be a part two if I can get a hold of some. Hey, we really appreciate everyone watching, and I hope you'll uh, recommend us to your friends. And if you want to stay tuned to watch a little review I did of uh, Trail Cam, that'd be great. We'll see you next time. So this is the Cam Park T200 uh, 4K trail camera. Nice folks sent it down for me to try. I've had it for a week or so, and I've uh, been using it at the off-grid cabin. Uh, the nice thing about this unit is it has a solar battery. So this little solar panel here charges the onboard battery which you can then use to directly power the camera through this little uh, accessory cable. So that's pretty handy. Uh, you can use uh, AA batteries. I believe it takes... It 
takes uh, eight AA batteries. But like I say, with the solar collector, you don't need to use batteries. Um, it's in a waterproof case, and it seems to be relatively uh, waterproof because I've had it outside in the rain and it was absolutely fine. Uh, it does daytime and nighttime. It takes video in 4K and photos. Uh, I've had really good luck with uh, the image quality. It's quite good. Uh, it seems to be sensitive enough to capture uh, animals and so forth. I've only had it for a week, so I haven't really had a chance to catch any wildlife. I've had some example photos of uh, our pup, uh, Iggy, and you can see a bit of the image quality from that. Uh, it has infrared uh, light emitters for nighttime photography. A couple of things I'm not keen on is the interface for the onboard menu system is a bit awkward. And it took me a couple of hours of playing around to figure out exactly how it worked. So navigating from video to photos and setting it up, I had a little bit of a tricky time with that. Uh, the other thing I'm not particularly impressed with is one of these uh, latches that hold the case closed fell off and went missing. They're only held on by a, a kind of a pressurized fit here. So they're pretty easy to knock off and one of them went missing within a day or two. So also the strap that comes with it is pretty uh, fiddly to connect. I'd like to see like a bungee cord type connector so you could just quickly strap it around a tree and not have to futz around with, uh, with all this. Another issue I found with the trail cam is that inserting a SD card here is no problem, but getting it back out is quite difficult. It's almost impossible to do with your fingers. You're going to need a set of tweezers or something, because when you depress it and it springs back out to, it only comes out about maybe four or five millimeters, not even beyond this seal, and you, there's no way to grab it. So you're going to need a little set of uh, tweezers or pliers or something to grab onto it to pull it all the way out. And I'm going to be using this uh, trail camera in the next few videos I make to show better examples of how it performs. It uh, seems to do pretty good in low light and nighttime. And uh, overall, I would say I would give it a 6 out of 10 right now. And then we'll uh, review it again in a couple of videos' time and see how it's been performing. Iggy. Iggy. Big, big. Iggy, come.